Hey everyone, Juliana from the Science Zone here uh, with another Daily Dose of Science. And today we've got a really um, exciting guest for you guys. So I'm gonna turn it over to Ranger Nicole here. Hello everyone, my name is Ranger Nicole and I'm so excited to be sharing a little bit of Yellowstone with all of you today. Our park is home to over 10,000 hydrothermal features. And we're gonna break down this word together. So when you are staying nice and hydrated, for hydro, you're drinking a lot of water. And if you're wearing thermal PJs, you're trying to keep your body nice and warm. So a hydrothermal feature is going to be a hot water system. And like I said, we have a ton of those here at Yellowstone National Park. And we're gonna go over those main types. Our first one is probably our most famous, and that is going to be our geysers. And we're gonna be doing a little experiment later today to make our own geyser. Now geysers are amazing features and that is because water from rain and snow travels underground for thousands of years. And it gets heated up by our heat source here in the park, travels through different tunnels underground and starts to get heated up by that um, energy underground and eventually hits a constriction point where that plumbing system gets really small. That adds a lot of pressure to this water. And as it's rising up, steam is expanding. And the bubbles in that water is actually what's allowing that water to erupt out of the ground. And I'm gonna show you a video of that eruption now from Old Faithful, one of our most famous geysers in the park. Now, another way to think of that constriction point is if you had a garden hose. So that rubber part of the hose would represent that plumbing or those tunnels underground, and the water is traveling through that tunnel there. Now, if you were just to let that water flow, it would flow right out of the top of the hose. But if you were to take your thumb and add a little bit of constriction or making that area smaller, you would be able to channel all of that water energy into one direction and kind of shoot it wherever you would like to. So now it is time for you all at home to make your own geyser. And we do have a quick demonstration for you guys. Uh, we are going to make some geysers here in the science zone. So I've got a couple film canisters, some Alka-Seltzer tablets, and some warm water. And Ranger Nicole is going to walk me through what we're doing here. Awesome, so the first thing that you need for that few is going to be protection, obviously. So we have our amazing scientist that's protecting this experiment. And the second thing you're gonna need is that plumbing system. So you're gonna get out your film canister to represent all of those tunnels underneath the ground. Awesome, and then you need that heat source. So whatever is creating your energy. So we have antacid tablets that are going to create that energy source. So what you're going to end up doing is adding some water, and we have warm water today to help out with our experiment. So you're gonna add a little bit of water to your film canister. And you only want it to be about halfway or three-fourths um, of the way up. And then once you have that water in your film canister, oh, awesome! <laughs> You're gonna make a geyser by adding that constriction point. So for the film canister, when you put the top on, there should be a little pin prick in the center. And that's what's gonna create that pressure buildup. And then when that um, antacid interacts with the water and it's building up that energy, those bubbles are gonna allow that water to travel through that constriction and make your amazing eruption. So I did go ahead and poke uh, holes in these before we started and I put up different few different size holes in them. So this one's got three little ones. That first one had one big one. So let's see what happens now. And this one's only got one small one.
Could you guys see a difference between those different eruptions? It's pretty cool. So Ranger Nicole, I understand there are some different uh, types of geysers, is this correct? There are, yes, and a lot of that has to do with just how that plumbing system interacts um, with the water um, and how the different minerals are able to form to form the different type of rock structures um, that make up the outside part of our geysers. Thank you for joining us on another Daily Dose of Science. Check out our extension activity and you can make your own geysers at home and we'll also include links to all of that stuff that Ranger Nicole just mentioned for you. Have a great day.